Authoritarian regimes and full-on dictatorships aren't known for their well-planned transit projects. From completely unnecessary monorails to things that don't currently exist, like the Hyperloop, there is no shortage of silly transit projects. In this video, we'll explore unnecessary and sometimes completely ridiculous transit projects in authoritarian countries and try to work out what would work better. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. The Moscow monorail is a 4.7 km or 2.92 mile long 6 station monorail line in the north of Moscow, connecting multiple metro lines to the All Russian Exhibition Center. It's operated by the Moscow Metro Company, like the rest of the traditional subway network of the city. Because of this, it is fully integrated into the metro system, with the line being designated as Metro Line 13. While the line itself works well, transporting people across the north of Moscow, the problem is that a monorail is completely unnecessary for this use case. There's a reason you don't see many monorails in the world compared to trams, light rail or metros. Monorails, due to their complex maintenance, lower passenger capacity than light rail and the need for elevation or suspension, are generally a bad idea in most cases. Building monorails makes sense in places where other forms of transit physically cannot fit for multiple reasons, like very high density of buildings or not enough road space. Looking at the area where the Moscow monorail is located, it's clear that the lack of space isn't an issue. The line mostly runs in a less dense part of Moscow, which definitely isn't dense enough to warrant building an elevated monorail. Instead of this, they could have built a new tram line or something like a light metro. In my opinion, the best option for this route would be something like the DLR in London. An automated light metro like the DLR could have served the route well, while being cheaper to build and to operate. Overall, despite my grievances with the Moscow monorail, it is a real, functional public transport line in regular passenger service. This definitely can be said for the projects later in this video. For the next one, we need to travel to the bastion of free speech itself, China. The straddling bus is a new proposed public transport method, consisting of a vehicle running over a street, with cars and other transit vehicles passing underneath it. There were a few proposals throughout history, but the most prominent one, and the one that got the furthest into development, was located in Qinhuangdao, China. The engineers behind the project built a prototype of the bus and began testing it in 2016. However, after a short while, tests were stopped and the project was abandoned, and in 2017, the CEO of the company that built the prototype was arrested for illegal fundraising. Looking back at the concept, there are a few reasons behind why the project might have failed. First of all, this would have been a magnet for traffic accidents. If the bus ever had to turn, the vehicles underneath it would have a terrible time, to say the least. Second of all, if this vehicle broke down, it would absolutely obliterate traffic for multiple hours. Since the bus would run above the street, passengers wouldn't be able to simply exit in case of an emergency, if the bus wasn't in a station. The original proposal planned for the bus to use inflatable slides for emergency situations, similar to airplanes. Using these slides would block traffic for hours at best, and simply not work at worst, since not all roads are wide enough to accommodate such slides. This leads to the third point. The straddling bus would only be viable on quite wide roads, since the vehicle itself is quite wide, and the accommodations needed for the emergency exit slides would add to the required road width. This means that this method of transport would only be viable on certain city streets. In my opinion, a better option would be to take two car lanes and build a light rail running through it, or if they wanted to build something elevated, they could construct an elevated rail or a metro. Overall, while the concept didn't really go anywhere, and it probably won't come to our cities anytime soon, it is at least theoretically viable. That definitely can't be said about the next project. Where do I even start with this thing? The Saudi Arabian government wanted to build a 170 km or 110 mile long, 500 meter or 1640 foot tall city in the shape of a line through the desert. And naturally, as with every bullshit project, they planned to run a hyperloop as well as a 170 km or 110 mile long subway line under it. Dissecting this tech bro wet dream, this is straight up impossible for multiple reasons. First of all, building an almost completely straight 170km 
or 110 mile long tube with a near complete vacuum inside of it would be prohibitively expensive. Not even Saudi oil money would probably be enough to cover the cost of building and operation. Second of all, the speed alleged by Neom is simply bullshit, at least with our current technology. Neom claims that the Hyperloop will travel at speeds up to 1200 kilometers or 745 miles per hour. The fastest train in the world, the L0 series, slated to run on the Chuo Shinkansen between Tokyo and Osaka, reached a top speed of 603 kilometers or 375 miles per hour. But of course, some tech bros think that we're gonna just casually double that with some futuristic looking tic tacs. I wouldn't hold my breath. Third of all, the subway line planned to run under the city would have too many stops and would take way too long to get anywhere. The speed couldn't be raised too much either, since the trains would have to accelerate and decelerate frequently to stop at stations. And lastly, if anything went wrong at any point on these two lines, the lines would be split in half, as there would be no alternate routings that could be taken. For example, look at this map of Prague. Let's say that the station of Angel on the B metro line blows up and collapses the tunnel. That would definitely suck, but replacement tram services could be set up, and if that didn't cover the demand, additional replacement bus services could be established. Modern transportation systems need redundancy in the form of alternate routes and or transit modes to be able to effectively cope with maintenance closures and unforeseen events like natural disasters, etc. The line would have none of these. If something ever happened to the Hyperloop or the subway, or if they had to be temporarily closed for maintenance, there would be no way to replace the services. As expected of such a ridiculous project, the Saudi Arabian government is scaling back the Neon project. In my opinion, the project will either be completely cancelled, or it will become a shadow of its lofty ambitions. In conclusion, it's nice that transportation projects are moving away from utilizing exclusively cars, but in lots of cases, the answer to the problems they're trying to solve is a time-tested, proven technology. Trains Trains can be adapted to fit the capacity, frequency, location and speed needs of almost any given transit project. So I hope that more places will start to see trains or other proven transit methods as solutions to their problems, rather than turning to bullshit projects like Hyperloops. Anyways, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with 3 membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell and Arrow Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! There were a few- <clears throat> Bro, bro. The original proposal planned for the bus to use inflatable slides for emergency- <coughs> This leads to the third point. The straddling bus would only be viable on quite wide roads, since the vehicle itself is qu- <coughs> In my opinion, the project will either complete- <coughs>